All right, finding the perfect name using the Igor naming guide. Uh, for some reason, trying to find a name for a company, it's almost harder, if not harder, than naming your own kid. The reason why is because you want to find an available domain. And uh, for example, you can call your name Mike, and it's okay, there's a million Mikes in the world, it's okay. Nobody's going to say, hey, you're infringing my name, I'm going to put you in jail or, or sue you. And somebody put you in jail. With domains, it's a different story. Uh, you cannot, only one person in the world or a company in the world can own a specific domain, which uh, makes things very difficult. So, if you want to find a good name, first you have to find if it's available, but it, it, I don't know what goes first, whether you choose the name or if you try to feel it's available and then if you just pick whatever is available. I think it's better to start uh, with, with the ideal name you like to have and then see if it's available. If it is, and if it's not, which most likely you won't, then uh, try to find a variation of the name, maybe not a .com, but a .net or a .li or something like that of that domain that is available. But anyways, let's go on with the Igor naming guide. I, cre I created this, not the actual guide, but I created this Excel sheet uh, so you can apply all the rules and criteria that the guide uh, teaches to find a name that is really cool because what makes a, this the, what the Igor naming guide answers is what makes a name great right and they de decide there's about nine different criteria and uh, it's the criteria basically is the appearance whether it's instinctive or not uh, depth energy humanity positioning sound what they call 33 and trademark and let's just quickly go over what each of these uh, criteria means so the appearance is simply how the name looks as a visual signifier in a logo an ad on a billboard the name will always be seen in context but it will be seen so looks are important so maybe it sounds great but the actual words put together they don't look that good so that's what appear means appearance means the instinctive how differentiated is given name from its competition being distinctive is not only one element that goes into making a name memorable, but it is a required element since if a name is not distinct from a sea of similar names, it will not be memorable. It's important when judging distinctiveness to always consider the name in the context of the product it will serve and among the competition it will, it will spar with from the consumer's attention. Well, basically, make sure that your name doesn't sound like, imagine you're doing a soda sodas don't call it coca-cola instead of coca-cola or nyko you know because it's not distinctive enough it sounds too much like that and you may even get sued because you're obviously trying to confuse people um, with the name uh, depth layer upon layer of meaning and association names with great depth never reveal all they have to offer all at once but keep surprising you with new ideas. Some of the best brands in the world, obviously, are Apple and, and uh, Virgin, for example. Uh, they, I mean, uh, Apple is not about apples, but it, it, you, up, the, the things that, that come to your mind when you think of an apple is something healthy, something that it comes from the beginning, you know? Uh, uh, like, remember when Eve, uh, she, on the, on the garden um, of Eden, uh, she uh, <laughs> did something wrong with that apple, right? <laughs> Anyways, there's many things that you associate to an apple that most is uh, positive. And uh, they're, they, these add layers to a name. It's not something very obvious, you know. Uh, the same about virgin. is something, wow, virgin, you know. It can be applied to sex. It can apply to something that's never been used before. Uh, it, finding depth on a name is it, important. Energy, how powerful does it sound, you know? How vital and full of life is the name? Does it have a buzz? Can it carry a net campaign on its shoulders? It is a force to be reckoned with. These are all aspects of a name's energy level, right? So, doesn't sound powerful. I mean, it really depends on your brand. Is your brand about being powerful? You know, a lot of the things seem common sense, but because there's several of these criteria you have to have into account, when you're thinking of a name real fast, it's hard to put them all in your mind and that's why I created this chart basically and then positioning how relevant the name is to your positioning 
to the position of the product or company being named, the service offered to the industry serve further, how many relevant messages does the name map to? You know, sound, again, uh, while always existing in a context of something, will be heard. How does it sound? Is it sound good? Is it the pronunciation? Maybe it looks very good in the appearance, but it sounds like crap. You know, maybe it reminds you of, of a bad word, right? Uh, for example, my name, Grumo, in Spanish is not necessarily a good word. It means uh, clump or lump and uh, or curd, uh, or, you know, the little things that have, appear in your milk, right? Um, but in English, which is my main market, it doesn't mean anything. And it's a short, easy to remember name and it's very distinctive. Right, uh, sound. Eh? It sounds fine. It's uh, to me about the thing about sound is that you want to make sure that people the first time they hear it they know how to spell it. And it's very hard to know how to spell things if there's a V's or B's, especially in Spanish. Uh, K's, uh, um, you know, C H. Uh, there, there's certain sounds that are ambiguous, and when you you hear them and they can be written in several different ways. Right, grumo really can, I mean, be written, at least in many languages, when you hear it, there's only one way of reading it. In, in English, unfortunately, it doesn't matter almost what you write, it could be written in several ways. But the times I've asked people to uh, write Grumo, they didn't have a problem to uh, spell it um, most of the time. 33 is an interesting concept. It's kind of like the magic, right? Refers to the mysterious 33 printed on the back of rolling rock beer bottles for decades that everybody talks about because nobody's really sure what it means, right? Uh, 33 is that certain something that makes people lean forward and want to learn more about that brand and to want to share the brand with others. The 33 angle is different for each name. I think this is a very important factor, and it's hard to describe, but you know, it, it, names and what they mean and, and, and what people think are so psychological. Uh, so picking a name that has that mystery in it, it's very important as well. Uh, trademark is, is quite a straightforward. It's, uh, uh, <laughs> as in the ugly meat, as in the, as in the ugly meat hook reality trademark of a scoring is easy. Here, there are only three options. Well, that's how they use it, but I mean, let's just simplify it. Trademark is whether <laughs> it's you think it's taken. You can do a little bit of research on, a, on the uh, trademark database online. And if it's taken, you're in trouble. Uh, look for, some, for something else. Now, it doesn't mean that you cannot trademark a name that is trademarked already. If the brand that is uh, that you're, you're using the same name of, for example, Apple, uh, it, it has a, a series of, of, of what they call uses that it applies to, maybe you can still mm, trademark it. So, it's, for example, if, if somebody uh, were to use Microsoft to sell, I don't know, mm, peanuts, <laughs> it has nothing to do with Microsoft says, so maybe you could trademark it and say, you know, we are not have nothing to do with the Microsoft. I mean, it's very hard actually for that to work when the brand is very well known. Uh, but for companies that are not very well known, well known and they have an exact, uh, an identical trademark, as long as they are not overlapping in services, uh, on what they do, you know, and this will take some uh, research from the trademark uh, uh, agents to figure out, and also obviously you have to consult with your lawyer, uh, it, you may be able to have the same trademark as somebody if there's no overlap. Uh, it's very hard. And it's a whole world in itself that I'm not going to cover. But this is how you use this uh, Igor naming guide. Let's say your name is Grumo. Well, I just added a bunch of different uh, criteria here. And uh, I just scored it, you know, from 0 to 5, right? 0 being the lowest and 5 the uh, largest. When you choose a name, let's say uh, Doodles, I don't know. Well, how does that look? It looks okay, you know? Distinctive, right? It's not that distinctive. Three depth, not very depth. <laughs> you know, energy, right? Maybe four humanity, maybe four. This is very, very relative, right? But it's it's just a way of you being able to figure out if a name is good or not. Positioning, um, uh, two sounds. So doodle sounds great. Thirty-three, maybe it's uh, has a lot of magic with it. Trademark. I, Probably it's already trademarked. I don't know. You have to do some research, and then you you can keep adding uh, your uh, 
the names that you would like to uh, have uh, for your website and then you obviously gonna try to find that on your domain and anything that is over 40 well obviously it's uh, it must be a good name right um, and anyways I'm gonna share the link for this uh, Excel sheet so if you ever have trouble trying to find a good name for for your company or your product uh, the Igor naming guide uh, it's gonna help you a lot alright thanks for watching